Hello and welcome back to my channel. So today you'll be learning a wonderful story called as King Sindbad and his Falcon. Once there was a king named Sindbad. The king was pleasure loving and in particular very fond of racing and hunting. The king had brought up a falcon as his pet. Wherever the king went, the bird went with him. Even at night, the falcon stayed with him on his fist the king had a golden cup tied around her neck to provide her drink during hunting one day when the king was sitting in his palace in a leisurely mood the falcon said to the king o oh, great king now the time is suitable for hunting the king liked her suggestion he ordered his subordinates to make the necessary arrangements for the hunt the king set out hunting with the falcon on his fist the king and his men continued to travel till they reached a valley his men formed a circular shroud of a net intended for the victim soon a gazelle was trapped within the net the excited king cried beware whoever allows the gazelle to escape from here will be punished to death the net was lifted by the king's hunting troop from all the sides gradually they began narrowing the net circle to trap the gazelle she too moved towards the king and stood on her hind legs she then lifted her fore legs up to her breast suddenly jumped above the head of the king and escaped out of the maze thus thwarting the whole effort the king turned towards his men he noticed them murmuring and pointing towards him the king asked his wazir oh wazir do my men want to say something the story begins with a king named sindbad and this king was pleasure loving and in particular he was very fond of racing and hunting and this king he had a pet and that was nothing but a falcon and wherever the king went the bird would follow him so even at night the falcon stayed with him on his fist now the king had tied a golden cup around the neck of that bird around the neck of the falcon to provide her drink during hunting so that she could drink from that golden cup the wazir replied your majesty they are saying that you have warned that you will kill the person who lets the gazelle escape the king replied i vow to bring her back and will not return till i accomplish it saying this the king galloped on his horse on the route that the gazelle had fled the falcon the king's hunting mate flew high up and traced the fleeing gazelle she at once swooped down and blinded the gazelle with her talons the king immediately struck his mace at the blinded gazelle and ended the matter forever he then cut the gazelle's throat removed its skin from the body and hung the spoils on the saddle one day when the king was sitting in his palace in a good mood the falcon said to the king o oh, great king now is the time suitable for hunting so this is the perfect time for hunting let's go hunting so the king liked her suggestion and he ordered his subordinates now who are subordinates people lower in rank or position so he ordered them saying that let them make the necessary arrangements for the hunting so that they could go out for hunting and the king set out hunting with the falcon on his fist now the king and his men they continued to travel till they reached a valley now what's a valley valley is nothing but a low area between the hills so they reached there and they planned for a trap for the victim so that they could catch hold of an animal and soon a gazelle was trapped in that net the net they had kept as a trap so the gazelle fell into that net now what is a gazelle 
So gazelle is any of many antelope species and usually they are known as swift animals. They are very fast. So after the gazelle got trapped in the net, the king was very happy. He was very excited and he said, beware, if anyone allows the gazelle to escape from that net, then I am going to punish you, punish you to death. So the king's people, they started lifting the net slowly from all the sides so that they could trap or catch hold of the gazelle. And with them simultaneously, even the gazelle started moving towards the king. And she stood on her hind legs, the behind legs. She stood on it such that her entire body was lifted. And suddenly she jumped above the head of the king and escaped from the trap. And the king turned towards his men. And he would notice that the people were talking. They were murmuring something. They were say, talking to each other very softly. And they were pointing towards the king. So the king asked his wazir. Wazir, the minister. Do my men want to say something? So he is asking him whether these people want to say something. It was midday and the place where they were wandering was devoid of any water source. The king and his horse were thirsty. The king went further in search of water. Finally, they reached a place where water was seen dripping through the leaves of a tree. The king was wearing a skin gauntlet to protect him from any poison. As his falcon was very thirsty, the king took out the cup from her neck and filled it with a dripping liquid. He then placed the cup in front of the falcon. But surprisingly enough, the falcon overturned the cup instead of drinking it. The king picked up the cup, filled it again and placed it in front of the falcon. But the falcon upset it again with her talons. The king was annoyed at the falcon's strange behavior. Next time, he filled the cup with the dripping liquid and placed it in front of his horse. However, annoyingly enough, the falcon hastily upset it again. The king became furious. He shouted at the falcon in anger, You unlucky and foolish thing! You are not willing to slake your thirst, nor are you allowing the horse to drink it. So the minister replied saying that they are all saying that you had warned that you will kill the person who lets that gazelle escape. So now they are waiting for your response. So the king replied, I promise to bring her back and I will not come back till I do it. By saying this, the king sat on his horse and he went in chase of that gazelle. Now the falcon who was the king's hunting partner, she flew high up on the sky and traced the fleeing gazelle, the escaping gazelle. She traced it and she at once came down in full speed and blinded the gazelle with her talons. Talons are nothing but the sharp nails. So the king immediately struck his stick at the blinded gazelle and he killed it and ended the matter forever. Then he cut the gazelle's throat and then he removed its skin from the body. He separated it and whatever spoils or whatever uh, important parts that he wanted from the gazelle, he removed it and he placed it on the saddle. He hung it on the saddle. So saddle is a leather covered seat that is put on the back of the horse as a seat. Okay, so he hung it over there. In his fury, the king took out his sword and chopped off the wings of the falcon. The falcon cried in pain. She then indicated the king to look up by raising her head. The king's eyes followed the falcon. He saw a poisonous viper lying up above the tree. The liquid which he mistook as water was drops of the snake's poison. The king was very remorseful for cutting off the wings of his loyal and beloved falcon. He rode on his horse and returned to his camp along with the dead gazelle. The falcon was still sitting on his fist. 
As soon as the king reached the camp and sat comfortably, the falcon, which was bearing the pain till then, suddenly gasped and succumbed to death. The repentant king cried aloud to lose his faithful companion who had saved his life. Now it was almost afternoon and the place where they were roaming, it was empty. They didn't have any water source over there. They didn't have anything to drink with them. And the king and his horse were thirsty and even the falcon was thirsty. So the king went in search of water. And finally they reached a place where water was seen dripping through the leaves of a tree. Now the king was wearing a skin gauntlet. A gauntlet is nothing but a type of a gloves which are very strong. And he was wearing that to protect from any poison. Now even his falcon was very thirsty so what he did was he removed the golden cup that was hung on the neck of the falcon. He removed it and he filled it with the dripping liquid which was falling from the leaves of the tree. So he filled it and he kept it in front of the falcon so that the falcon drinks it. But the falcon she overturned the cup instead of drinking it. She pushed it down. Now the king picked it up. He filled it again and kept it again in front of the falcon. But again the falcon did the same thing. She repeated it. She put it down again. Now the king was very angry at the falcon's behavior. And next time what he did is he filled the cup and instead of keeping it in front of the falcon he kept it in front of the horse because even the horse was thirsty. So he, at least the horse could drink it. But the falcon again comes there and he puts it down again. She is not letting even the horse to drink it. So now the king got very upset and he shouted at the falcon in anger saying that you are not willing to fill your thirst. And you're not even allowing the horse to do it. Now in his anger, the king, what he did is, he took his sword and he cut off the wings of the falcon in anger. And the falcon started crying in pain. And then she indicated the king to look up by raising her head. She couldn't talk. She was in so much pain that she just looked up saying that the king also should look at that direction. And when the king saw in that direction, he saw a poisonous viper, a snake lying up above the tree. And the liquid that was mistook as water, it was not water but it was the snake's poison which was falling as drops from the leaves of the tree. Now the king was very sad for cutting off the wings of his loyal pet. He rode on his horse and returned to his camp along with the dead gazelle which he had hung on the saddle. The falcon was still sitting on his fist but it was in pain. As soon as the king reached the camp and he sat comfortably, the falcon which was tolerating all the pain till then suddenly died. She gave up and she died. Now the king who was very sad about his mistake. He cried loudly because he lost his faithful companion who had saved his life. And he was very sad because of that. I hope you have understood this lesson. In case you have any doubts, you can comment below. And don't forget to like and subscribe the channel. Thank you for watching and keep watching for more videos. Thank you. Stay safe.